Hey, this is Corey Knight with Classroom Tech Made Simple, and you've probably already seen our Google Classroom tutorial. And in that tutorial, we used a desktop to set up our classes and go through some certain scenarios on how to set up Google Classroom. So in this tutorial, we're going to check out Google Classroom from an iPad using the app. If you haven't already downloaded the app, go ahead and do so. I'm going to open it up, and it's going to ask you to go ahead and get started. You can either check the sign up for emails about classroom features and updates. You don't really have to, uh, but go ahead and click get started. And then you're going to select the account that you want to utilize. Now remember, you can now use a personal Gmail account for Google Classroom. When it first came out, you were not allowed to use a personal Gmail account, so now you can. I still am going to advise you to look into setting up that G Suite for education or the Google Apps for education account, but it is not necessary with the new updates to Google Classroom. So go ahead and sign in. One thing that I wanted to let you know is that if you choose not to use the G Suite for education, this is going to be the notice that will pop up. Just know and understand that the G Suite for education allows schools to decide which Google services that students can use and just gives that extra protection and privacy and even security protections. So students cannot just use Google Classroom with just school and personal accounts. So that's something to keep in mind as you're going through and using the G Suite for education. After you sign in, it's going to ask if Google Classroom can send you notifications. This is if uh, maybe a student has sent you a message or you have assignments that you are about to be grading or that are due. It's up to you. I usually click don't allow. So you can see these are the same classes that I had previously on that Google Classroom account that we set up using a desktop. So just like when we used Google Chrome on a desktop, this is pretty similar. You can see over here on the left hand side, just like in all the other Google apps, this is the account that is associated with this particular app. You can see that I'm using my school account right now. Um, if you'd like to switch that out, you just click this drop down tab and I can click on a different account right there. Now if you want to create a new class or you're just now opening this for the first time, you're going to hit the plus button and you're going to create a class just like we did with Google Chrome. And I'm going to create a class. You can create a section if you want, it's not necessary. And you click the create button in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so this is incredibly similar to the Google Chrome version that we used with a desktop when we were setting this up. Just like before, you've got the stream, students, and about. So let's start with the stream. If you go here to the stream, this is actually on the stream right now. You hit the plus button and you still have that question, assignment, announcement, all that stuff. So let's start by creating an announcement. Maybe the homework that you assigned is due tomorrow. You can either click multiple classes, just check off the classes that you want this announcement to be posted to. And if you want specific students, you have a list right here of all the students that would be in this class. You would just check them off if you want to do just a few students. If you want to give them a topic, you'd have to add a topic. Maybe it's homework. Maybe it's a, you're reminding them of a test tomorrow. It's totally up to you. If you want to add an attachment, you hit the paperclip button in the upper right hand corner and you can add an attachment from Google Drive. You can pick a photo. You can use your camera or you can link from another external website if you need that to be used for maybe a study resource or something along those lines. When you're ready to post your announcement, you just hit the paper airplane and it posts that to your class. So if you're gonna add an assignment, it's pretty much the same thing. You've got the title, you've got instructions, and then an optional due date, and the same applies. If you wanna add an attachment, those same attachment options are still going to be available to you as a teacher. So that is how you would include an assignment. Now this is something that you can do. It includes a, a due date and that's gonna be the major difference. So maybe you're having your students create a Google Slides and you want them to turn it in on Google Classroom, which I advise you to do. Um, you could actually have them turn it in from Google Drive right there. So go into the student section, you have that class code that you will share out with your students. And that is a unique class code to the class that you have created on Google Classroom. I advise all the teachers that I help to create classes for each one of their periods. If they teach more than one period in a day, 
create an individual class for each one because any announcement and any assignment that you create, you can send it out to all of them just by checking those check marks in the options. If you hit this plus button, you can specifically write in all of your students' emails and then you would click the invite button. In the about section, this is where you're going to include information about yourself and this will be the information about the class. So that is Google Classroom from an app. Before we conclude this tutorial, I'm going to go back to the stream and I'm going to create an assignment and I want to show you how students can turn in assignments from Google Drive where all of your files are included. So I'm going to create an assignment. We're just going to say that this is a Classroom Tech Slides project. I'm not going to create a due date for this, but I'm going to assign this to our students. So in order to assign this to our students, I'm going to click the paper airplane. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here and I'm going to show you how to turn in a project on Google Classroom from Google Drive. Okay, so I'm now showing you from what a student perspective would look like if they were to turn in an assignment and even join a class created by the teacher. So, when your students first log in, they're going to hit the plus button and they're going to click join a class. And if you remember, that unique code that I showed you earlier is going to be the unique code that we're going to enter in order to join that class. And then you click join. Okay, so this is from the student perspective. And after you, your students sign in, they will pretty much see the same screen as you do. They just don't have the administrative role that you do as the teacher. So you can see that I have assigned as the teacher the Classroom Text Slides project. So this is from the student's perspective. Students can either add a private comment at the bottom. After they add an attachment, they can mark it as done. So let's go ahead and add an attachment. So students can choose to create a new docs. They could maybe use the camera, pick photo, create a link. Generally speaking, they're going to drag all of their information and their attachments from Google Drive. So they're going to click Google Drive, and this is directly linked to their Google Drive. To add an assignment or to add a Google Slides project, I'm going to click that. It's going to attach it, and then students will then click Turn In. That's how students turn in assignments on Google Classroom. So let's go back to the announcement. Students then are able to see these announcements just as you are able to see the announcement. If the student has a question about that particular comment or that announcement, maybe they need to figure out which assignment and what page number. Students can send that off. So students can see this just as everyone else. You can see right here the student says, it says that they are done, so they automatically know that this is completed. So that is how Google Classroom will work from a student's perspective. Just a reminder, signing up for the G Suite for Education platform is going to be your best route. While you can use personal Gmail accounts, your best route is to sign up for that G Suite for Education. It is going to make the whole process a lot more streamlined and simple, and it will benefit student learning in the long run by adding that extra security and privacy protection. Okay, if there are any further questions, always feel free to contact me at Corey at Classroom Tech Made Simple. And I hope that you utilize Google Classroom in your class as a learning management system. It really is an easy to use, simple interface that can change the dynamics of your class. I'll see you next video.